Okay, now this is a tale of two different games. Well, two different Flyers teams, I should actually say, because the first and the second period Flyers teams were, oh my god, it was bad. The first and the second period were so bad, oh my goodness. But then when you get into the third period, I'm like, what is this team? I'm like, who were these guys on the ice? Is this the Flyers team that we've seen the entire season? It it was two completely different teams. Two completely different. First and the second period, so let's start with that. But even even before we get into the first and second period, just like the, the overall even going into this game, so it sounds like Elaine Vigneault is doing like his typical thing and he calls out players when they're not doing good. And it sounds like Robert Haig is going to be a guy that's going to be benched. And you're going to see Eric Gustafson slide into the lineup. But then Elaine Vigneault is also calling out a guy like Mark Friedman for not playing up to his standards. So it sounds like he is going to be benched. And then the Flyers are going to be bringing in a 34-year-old defenseman who hasn't played in the NHL for over two seasons when they recalled him from the taxi squad, in Nate Prosser. So, going into the game, you were going to have a bottom pairing of Eric Gustafson, and we all know the story about him the entire season, and Nate Prosser. And just going into that, I was, I was, I was about to barf. I was about to throw up physically and theoretically in my mouth. Because, what? And I understand Robert Haig and Mark Friedman haven't been playing good, but that's the best we got, I guess. I guess that's our other option. Because ugh, going into it on paper was just like, oh my god. It didn't look good, and you, you, you saw the reaction from Flyers fan base. It was, just, it was just absolutely funny, though. It was. And then even going into the game, what happened was absolutely funny as well. So you're going into the game with Eric Gustafson and Nate Prosser as your bottom parent. But then also some other news going into, in regards to into the future for the Flyers before we get into this game. So, Elaine Vigneault also talked about Sean Gatorier, still saying that he's probably going to be a couple of weeks away at this point. So, he was week to week. So, well, I think he was actually like a two-week timetable at least. So, Sean Gatorier is still going to be missing time, so don't expect him in the near future. But they did talk about Phil Myers, and Phil Myers is starting to practice with the team again which is a good sign. He was that week-to-week timetable for his injury, the fractured rib. So, Elaine Vigneault said he's not totally out for this weekend against the New York Islanders on Saturday and Sunday, but he's not saying that he's going to be playing in those games. So, basically, at this point, you're putting down Phil Myers as questionable to be playing in those two games. So, there's some hope there to have Phil Myers back into the onto the blue line, even though it'll be better I feel like there's still going to be those glaring issues that we've been seeing the entire season. So I'll talk about that later after we're done after the recap of the game. So going into the game, so starting off, the Flyers had a little bit of jump in their game. They did. Claude Drew had an early breakaway, a turnover off the puck. Claude Drew turns it over, and then he comes up to comes up the ice in the devil zone. And he, he has all the space in the world, and the puck just literally just rolls off of his stick. And he can't do any, can't do anything. It looked like the defenseman got back to maybe like tug Drew a little bit, so he couldn't have control or get his stick onto the puck that was rolling away. So that was a missed opportunity right there. And also, Flyers had a couple more chances early on in that period. They couldn't find a way to cash any in. And then it just felt like it was Devils the rest of the way through. The Devils would get a power play eventually. The Flyers would kill it off. But we go a little before halfway into this period because this period did go by a little quickly. I think this was, like I said, before halfway, before the halfway mark. Both teams are on a line change. The Devils are still pressuring in the zone. Carter is having to make a few saves. And then, like I said, both teams are making a line change. You got Damon C- Severson coming up the neutral zone into the flyer zone. And then you got Eric Gustafson in the worst positioning possible, not even going after C- Severson. And he just has all the open space in the world to take the shot on Carter Hart. And it goes off the post and goes into the net. So it's a one nothing Devils lead. A terrible positioning by Gustafson. And maybe another goal that Carter Hart would want back. He's making saves early in this game too. That's definitely one of those goals that Hart would want back. I do feel like he needed to make the save. But then you can also put blame on Gustafson for being in the worst position possible. Not even putting any competition up on Severson just to allow him to take that wide open shot. 
But then the Flyers a little over two minutes two minutes later. They're getting a little four check in there from the Kevin Hayes line. Kevin Hayes doing a little bit of his things. There was a shift before that where he was trying to drag the puck a little way too much and it caused him to a turnover. But they had the puck in this zone for a little bit. And they're setting up stuff. The Flyers get some shots on net. I think this was a shot from JVR or this was a shot from Gustafson. It goes off of the net. JVR trying to get the puck in there. He puts it over to the right side. And then who out of all people driving the net? It's Nate Prosser. <laughs> and he ties the game at one. So if I was on the watch party for the painted lines when this was happening. And I was just like, I was just like, oh, they scored. And who was it? Who was it? I was, like, was that Prosser? <laughs> And I just, I just couldn't help but release all the laughter in the world. I'm just like, out of all the people in the world, the score goal, it was Nate Prosser. A guy that hasn't played in the NHL in over two years, he gets the goal. I'm just like, okay, it's, it, it's one of these situations. Okay, I see how it is, but I couldn't just contain the laughter. If they say the Flyers tie the game at one, JVR and Gustafson get an assist on the play. So, so yeah, 1-1. One, one. Then the rest of the period was all devils. All devils. They were getting chances left and right. The Flyers, they were just on their heels. They were standing still. Carter Hart having to make these saves. He, I think one of these saves happened in the second period. But, like, Carter Hart just haven't... Like, even though they weren't the best of chances for the devils, they were still chances nonetheless. Carter Hart making some nice saves on the penalty kill on a shot by Kyle Palmieri. So, you go out of the period... And you're still tied 1-1. One one. You were getting outplayed a majority of it. And you still find a way to have the game tied. I think shots after the period. The Flyers were getting heavily outshot. It was like 14-4 after the first period or something like that. So you go into the second period. You have a little bit of jump again. You get some chances. But then it basically turns into the same situation as it was in the first period. But no goals were scored. But the Devils controlled the pace of the entire period. I was like, oh my god. The Flyers had a power play, too, in this period. They couldn't generate anything off of it. And then this this one situation after the power play, oh, my God. It was just, I'm like, what the hell happened? It was, I think the Flyers were trying to get the puck in deep. They didn't get it deep enough. The Devils pounced on it, and the Flyers were in the middle of a change. Their defense was in the middle of a change. And there was no one back. I think it was Braun coming off of the bench trying to get back into the play. He eventually did, but it turned into a four-on-one for the Devils. I'm like, where is everyone at? Where is everyone at? <laughs> Thankfully, it turned into nothing, but a four-on-one? Are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me? The Devils just continue to dominate this entire period, and they had two power plays in this period. They couldn't do anything. The Flyers' penalty kill actually did their job in this game and killed off every single Devils' penalty, so I guess that's one of the other positives to look at. But a four-on-one, and just granted by all the other chances that the Devils were getting in this period, and the shots in this period were four once again for the Flyers. They really didn't generate anything once again, and then ten shots for the Devils. So the Devils, just another entire period where they were just allowed to control the pace of the play, where it looked like it was a power play the entire period. They were turning pucks over. The Flyers were slow in transition, always slow to get to the puck. They were about to get some chances. Travis Konechny and Nolan Patrick almost had a 2 on 0 but they were just slow in transition and getting up into the ice, and they just make one too many passes, and then it goes the other way for the Devils. So just one, two, they, the Flyers were entirely gassed this entire period when they tried to get into transition and the devils were pouncing on it and you just saw the same mistakes over and over and over again like you saw in previous games but then something changed you go into the you go into the intermission it's still tied so there's something to look at you're getting outplayed but you're still tied somehow your goaltender's playing well and you are blocking shots the flyers blocked a lot of shots in this game the flyers had 16 block shots so they were playing defense a little bit for their goaltender. They were getting into the lanes. They were clogging it up, making sure the Devils didn't have that many shots, even though they still were heavily outshot in this game. But you go into the third period. You're still tied. And when you start the third period, both teams go with the fourth line to start the period. And it felt like there was something different in the Flyers game. And you got to give it to the coaching, too. Because Elaine Vigneault was definitely not happy with the way the Flyers were playing in the first two periods. And a good coach is 
not going to let that happen, and he's going to make the team go out there with a different jump in the third period. And the Flyers had a much different jump in the third period. Oh my god, that fourth line. The fourth line was something else in the third. They were forechecking. They were forcing turnovers. That fourth line was playing great in that third period. They were great. I was just, I'm just like, what is this Flyers team? They're playing much better. Even though this period they still got outshot, the Devils still had their chances. The Flyers played much better. They did. And the fourth line was a reason for that. And for the great play by the fourth line, they got a goal off of it. You got the fourth line, they forecheck. Albie Kubel throwing the puck to Connor Bunneman. He's trying to get to the net. He eventually gets the shot off. He hits the post. He gets behind Wedgwood. But the puck hits the post. He goes out into the slot where Michael Roffel is to just backhand the rebound into the net. And you get a 2-1 lead. And the Flyers, they just continue the forecheck. That was the thing. They were they were establishing their forecheck. They were getting into the play. They were counterattacking. They weren't sitting behind. They weren't standing on their heels. But it felt like in the first and the second period. There was something different about this period. Even though they were outshot, there was something different in this period. And I felt like they were the better overall team. And the Flyers, they get another chance later on in this period. I think it's like around like near the halfway point once again. You get an offensive zone draw for Claude Giroux. And also, Elaine Vigneault decided to change up the first and the second line going into this period. He put Nolan Patrick G and Jake Voracek on one line and then flip-flopped Konechny to Kevin Hayes' line with James Van Riemsdyk. So we get a little bit of mix-up matching with the Lions. And when you have the Giroux line out there, he wins the face-off, gets the puck to Nolan Patrick, who takes it away. He puts it to Jake Voracek, who's behind the net. And then Voracek finds Eric Gustafson with a pitch-perfect pass to him, who is wide open on the left circle. And then Eric Gustafson puts this amazing shoot pass Onto the stick of Claude Giroux, who's in the crease, puts it off of his stick and into the net, and it's a 3 to 1 Flyers lead. And the Flyers, from there, all they had to do was shut it down. They had a lot of other chances in this period. Scott Lawton was having a couple of chances. Same thing with Joel Farabee. They were establishing their forecheck way better in this period. The Devils still had their chances. They had a power play in this period as well, right after the Flyers made it a 3 to 1 game. The Flyers also had a power play. But they really couldn't do anything on their power plays in this game. The shots in this period were 9-10 to in total of the New Jersey Devils. The, the, the Devils still outshot them in this period, and they heavily outshot them in this game. 34-17 to in total. The Flyers, it's still an issue. They're still getting way out, too many sh outshot. I mean, they're getting outshot way too much, is what I mean. So, the third period, you played a lot better. You established your forecheck. You played a lot better defensively. But th there were still a little bit of problems. Still turning the puck over a little bit too much. And they were still, like, throwing the puck into the middle of the ice, hoping that the someone's going to pick it up. And sometimes they still focus on playing a little too much east-to-west style of hockey. They got to find a way just to play more north-south. Stop playing with the puck a little bit too much. And just get it in the zone. Do the simple things. Get your chances. Because in the third period... They were getting their chances. In the first and the second period, they weren't getting their chances. Like I said, this was a tale of two different Flyers teams in this entire game. First and the second period was completely awful, and it was the same team for the first other seven games of the season. This third period was a completely different Flyers team. The mistakes were still noticeable, but they established their forecheck, and they caused the Devils to be very uncomfortable in this period. Which is something else to, I guess, build off of. That's something you have to look forward to. Well, that's something you have to take out of this game. Look at the positive of what you did in that third period. Try to work that more into your game. Try to find that, make it established more consistently. And also for Carter Hart to have this type of game. He stopped 33 out of 34 shots for the, for the Flyers. And an incredible bounce back game for him after his struggle against the Boston Bruins. Where he was breaking his sickle on the goalpost. Throwing it everywhere, basically showing off his entire frustration to, with himself and to the rest of the team. And I would say the team played a little bit more better in front of him. They were blocking shots. They allowed him to see the puck more easily. So he had a much better game, and he also made a, an incredible save in the second period, too. And it also felt like in that first and second period, Jack Hughes was just allowed to do whatever he wanted. In the third period, where the Flyers were forechecking and establishing their physicality, they played a lot better, and Jack Hughes didn't have as many chances. And the Devils, they pulled the goalie, I think, what around, like, it felt like it was like three and a half minutes left. And the Flyers, they were playing sound defensively. The Devils had some shots, 
and the Flyers were trying to clear the puck all the way down. Yeah, as Claude Giroux had, had a chance to clear it all the way down, he missed the net. Scott Walton trying to be way too pass happy, giving it to Provorov. Couldn't get, generate a chance going into the empty net. But hey, Flyers closed out this game. They win it 3-1. to And there are positives and negatives to take out of this game. I feel more better about this win than Tuesday's win, just because of how you played in the third period. On Tuesday, there was just a lot too much sloppiness going around the entire game. There was. Tuesday's game, it felt way more sloppy. Even though the first and the second period were incredibly sloppy and you were getting outplayed the entire time, the third period was a much better change of pace. It was. And that's something you have to find a way to build off of. Take the positives from that third period. You establish your fourth check. Find a way to make the other team just fumbling. And you sh the devil showed their mistakes. Because the Devils, they're a very young and talented team. They're not a good team. There's a difference between young and talented and young and talented and good. They're not a good team. They're just young and talented. And they're going to show their mistakes. And the Flyers exposed that in the third period by establishing their forecheck. And that allowed them to score two goals. So, it also helps when Mackenzie Blackwood's not in the net for the Devils either. That also helps a lot. So... It's going to be a tough task for the Flyers going into this weekend. They play the New York Islanders on Saturday and Sunday. And we all know the the heat between these two teams. The, there's definitely a lot of bad blood between these two. The, the Islanders have had the Flyers number over the past year and a half. And especially going back into the playoffs where the Islanders won in seven games. And basically just outplayed the Flyers the entire series. But the Flyers still found a way to force it to seven games somehow because of Carter Hart. So it's going to be a tough battle for the Flyers. And they gotta find a way to build this positivity from this third period. Find a way to go into into this weekend set of games. I wonder if the lineups are gonna stay the same. Who knows with Elian Vigneault if he's gonna mix match the lineup once again. So we're just gonna have to find find out until this weekend. Find out until the first practice. It's gonna be very interesting. Definitely very interesting. But it is nice the Flyers have a two game win streak on their hands. They're five two and one on the season. There's still a lot of things that they have to work out. And also just like. Maybe work out, maybe um, when I was talking about like a couple of episodes ago when I think the Flyers, maybe do if the mistakes continue to happen, which sometimes they are, the, the mistakes do continue to happen, maybe they do go out into the trade market. Because St. Louis, they are, looks like they're putting Vince Dunn on the trade market, a very young defenseman, very serviceable. He has a lot of, he has a, he's struggling a little bit with the St. Louis Blues right now, but he's a young guy, he's 24. He's played very well for the Blues over the past so many years. He won the Cup with them in 2019. Has a very team-friendly contract. I think it only one year left with like $1.8 million on the cap. So it's a very serviceable contract. But the only thing is I think they're trying to demand a first-round pick for him. So maybe with the way he's been struggling and the way he's been getting benched for the past few games, maybe that price drops a little bit and maybe the Flyers go out and attack. Because I do think Chuck Fletcher is doing his due diligence and looking into the trade market to help this team out. So... I feel like that's something the Flyers should look into. Definitely would be an upgrade into this defense because they definitely need some type of upgrade. Especially when Phil Myers comes back, it will be an upgrade. But I do feel like they need it even more. They definitely do. So, it's going to do it for this video. What are your thoughts on the Flyers and this win today? How do you think they played between the first, second, and the third period? Basically, the two different team tails. Just how do you think the team played overall? And what are your thoughts going into the Islanders series? So... Don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to check out the Paid Alliance, which I'm a part of. Like I said earlier, we did our Flyers watch party. It was a really great time with us in the live chat. So definitely check that out. Their links will be in the description below. Don't forget to check out the Flyer Podcast merchandise website. That link will also be in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time.